Oh, I think it's happening. I think it's happening, people. I think it's real. I think we're going live. And I think that, yeah, I think we're there. I think we're live. All right, let's play some music. What do you say? Thank you for tuning in. Um, for those of you who don't know, I am Mark Nicholas. I am, uh, I go by the name Cosmicity because, and we'll start with a story, because I uh, didn't know what to call myself. I had many different band names when I was a kid uh, that I went under. Um, at the time, there was no consideration of using my name uh, because, you know, I, I liked Erasure. I liked Depeche Mode. I liked Pet Shop Boys. I liked uh, all these bands. And uh, hey, hello, Synth Synth 2. What's your real name, Synth Synth 2? I know you. I forget your name. Type it. Um, thank you. Uh, so um, I would brainstorming with my friends uh, in college, and we were trying to come up with band names, and I went through many, and um, somebody was like, describe your music, and I'm like, well, you know, it's electronic, and it's synthy, but it's got like a, you know, like uh, an outer space thing going on because of the synthesizers, it's kind of cosmic, and they're like, okay, cosmic and electricity, cosmicity, and I'm like, that's not a word, and they're like, it is now, and it is now. <laughs> it's uh, it's been unfortunate in some ways. If uh, if you uh, if you asked a marketing genius if I should call myself Cosmicity, they would say no. It's difficult to spell because it's not a real word, so people aren't sure if they've got it right. It's uh, it, they don't know how to pronounce it. Uh, I did work it into a song uh, on this most recent album that I released a couple years ago, but still people don't know how to pronounce it. There was a DJ. Um, I was listening to his show, does a does a live stream, and he played that song where I you know where I sing, you know, ask your doctor if cosmicity is right for you, and he ended the song and said, I still don't know how to say cosmic city, cosmosity, and he he missed it in the lyrics. What are you gonna do? Um, hey Carlos, hey Lalo, um, Al, that's your name, Marco, how are you? Where is my Star Wars shirt? No Star Wars shirt. I do have a shirt uh, under this shirt, but it is not a Star Wars shirt, and no one's going to know what the shirt is. It is uh, it's from a place I like in Venice, California, called the Salt and Straw, uh, and they serve overpriced ice cream, and it is fantastic. Uh, highly recommended if you're on the west coast of the United States. Um, Hi, Jamie. Jamie says not to trust a marketing genius. He may be right, you know? Maybe the fact that cosmicity is difficult to remember makes it memorable, something like that. Kind of like, you know, stars with odd names. Um, so who knows? But uh, let's start off with a favorite. Um, I'm going to start off by playing Alone. Um, a lot of people really like this song. It was an important song for me. Um, because I had been releasing albums for a few years. I'd found a few fans, but I hadn't uh, found a lot. And then um, I released Isabella, the album Isabella that this song is on, and that song, that album didn't do well. And this was the first one released on a big, not a big, on an actual record label, a different drum. Um, and I thought, oh, you know, no one's buying it. Not no one, but just a handful of people were buying it. I thought it would be bigger, it had more exposure, it wasn't taking off. It was almost a year before people started buying copies, and I didn't know why they were buying copies, and I realized finally that they were playing the song alone in clubs on the East Coast, which was so cool. Um, especially a few years later when I got to tour on the East Coast in 2000 with the Summer Synth Pop tour, and uh, people were singing that song back to me. What an exciting feeling. That was, I think that's when I first felt like I'd reached people because I, I they were singing those lyrics back to me and it was that was really cool. So um, let's take a listen to Alone and uh, and I'll talk a little bit more about it.
liked it um let's see a couple other notes about that song what can i tell you all right um that song wouldn't exist if it wasn't for my best friend david um i talk about him a lot uh because he was such a big part of um getting cosmicity up and running um and he was in the studio while i was recording a lot of this stuff and he certainly was there for the recording of the song but he was also there when i was um writing this song and he was such a big fan of this remixer at the time um who went by motivate uh rodway was his last name and um he did you know he did remixes for a lot of bands um probably some that you heard and didn't realize you heard and um i was really kind of lifting his sound a little bit for like the the type of bass that's in alone um, and the type of drums that are in an alone. Uh, the rest of it is me. You know, it's my kind of a uh, songwriting, I think, with the stream of consciousness lyrics and um, and the strings and stuff. But the uh, but the uns, uns factor was uh, sounds a little bit like a motivate remix. Uh, so thanks to David for that. Um, let's see what else. Uh, <laughs> there's some great comments on here. All right. Um, my friend Jamie uh, is also online right now, and he does all of the album covers for Cosmicity. So not only did, did he do this awesome cover, which I love for the most recent record, which is the only one available on vinyl, so if you're a vinyl person, don't miss this. Um, but he has done, I mean, God, so many great covers. I've got some CDs sitting around here. What can I grab that's handy that I love? Okay. Humans May Safely Graze, great, great record, great cover. Um, not to pat myself on the back, but uh, Jamie did such a cool image for that. I love it. It's just awesome. And um, I have Escape Pod for Two handy here also, which is another one of his most brilliant designs. I just love this one. I love this one inside and out. I love everything about it. Um, there's so much, so much great imagery. Um, but, um, yeah, oh, I forgot, okay, in this, in the dual version of Escape Pod, there's, uh, oh, is this not that one? Yeah, there's a second disc, and, uh, Reserve Fuel, it's just a big mushroom cloud, fantastic. Um, anyway, not to divert from what I was, uh, talking about, but, Jamie deserves all the kudos in the world. The whole look and feel of Cosmicity has been in his hands since 1998, I think. Uh, and he's done such a great job. So, um, 
All right, one other thing I wanted to play um, is another song that a lot of people have loved over the years. It was never one of my favorites, if I'm going to be honest with you. I, I liked the words. I didn't like the production of the music. It's called Digital Delays, and it's from the binary language of love. I'm going to find that cover because it's so great. Binary language of love. So cool. Love it. Love that it makes a heart, right, if you look at it carefully but I love that it's an Ethernet cable too. Um, good job, Jamie. Um, anyway, uh, I was never happy with the whole recording of that record. One of my least favorite albums, not because I don't like the songs, but more I just don't like the recordings. I was still new to home studio recording and they just didn't come out the way I wanted. And uh, Digital Delays is cool, but it just sounded dry. So for when I played it live, I had just a slightly altered version with just a little more kick to it. Still not how I would do it today, um, but I do. I had that handy, and I thought I would play that version um, because people like that song, and uh, I wanted to play it in some way, but this one always sounded just a little bit better to me. So um, let's listen to that, and then when, I, when we come back, I'm going to uh, I'm gonna play uh, something that's a bootleg that somebody made of one of my songs, which I think is pretty cool. Um, it's a bootleg of a cover that I did. So, you know, very interesting. So, well, first, Digital Delays from 2003 uh, or 2002, somewhere around there, the version that we would play live. <laughs> Thank you. 
lethargic, I'm so lethargic, 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 I'm so lethargic. So go the days of our quickly passing lives. So go the days and the digital delays. So go the days of our quickly passing lives. digital delays oops sorry a little jumping of the gun on the next one there um so uh yeah digital delays from 2003 um a little bit just a little bit amped up it's still pretty similar to the original but a little little something something um all right so um daniel asked a great question that i'm going to address but i already said that i was going to do um this uh bootleg remix of a cover first so i'm gonna i'm gonna do that but He's going to cue right into uh, what I was going to talk about um, on a song called The Anger Remains, and I will talk and I will address what he asked about then. Um, but first, let's do this. Um, there is a song by the Pet Shop Boys called I Want a Dog. Um, I always loved it. It always made me laugh, but it also had a great sound. Um, and when I um, covered it, I wanted to do it in a, a different vibe because I... I heard those lyrics and I'm like, this this is a, this is a song about a guy who's lonely in his small flat, and I think that it wouldn't it, you know it wouldn't necessarily be a dance track, although I like that he made it a dance track. Um, so um, I did this version, and I'll play. I'm gonna play maybe half of it, and uh, just so people who aren't familiar with my cover of their song can get a feel for it uh, through at least a chorus maybe, and then. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, play a bootleg remix that somebody did that is floating around out there um, where they clubbed it back up, uh, which is pretty fun. So let's check this out for a minute. There's a little bit of that. Um, I had a chihuahua at the time, and I lived in a relatively small 
all right apartment but still um, I related uh, so it just that song just spoke to me um, so uh, what else people are saying that they like that better than the original that is incredible thank you so much uh, to all of you saying that um, I love the original quite a bit so that's a hell of a compliment um, but uh, thank you so much so uh, <laughs> people a lot of people will go but I love cats that song's so anti-cat it's all right, right? He's just having fun. Everybody loves dogs and cats, I think. But, you know, you're either more of a dog person or more of a cat person. I was a little bit more of a dog person. Plus, I'm more allergic to cats, if I'm being honest. Um, all right, so here is the remix that I found online that somebody had done. Uh, he did this. Uh, it was part of a collection, it seemed like, of Pet Shop Boys covers that he had beat mixed all together into, like, a, a dance like a big dance CD um, and I found it on there and I, he certainly didn't have the parts of the song for me so the original song is there and he just laid a beat on top but it's still pretty fun so we'll listen to some of that and uh, and we'll come back starts to blend into another song there anyway um so uh that's it that i, I called it a bootleg remix because it truly was a bootleg i do not know uh the person who made it uh zadnik i have no idea how you say his name um <laughs> jim's doing a great clerks ref reference for that berserker girls think sexy um 
Hi, Jim. How are you? Thanks for tuning in. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's, um, that's, I was glad to find it. Maybe that guy will, uh, or gal, will reach out and say, hey, because um, I like that mix. And um, okay, I'm going to get into um, a more current song, one that's from this decade anyway. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about what somebody asked about earlier, which was, um, they asked a good question about how hard it is to um, work on some of these songs, how much work goes into them and how much, you know, how much struggle or, or how easy they come to me. And it absolutely varies by song. Um, some songs come together fairly quickly. Sometimes the music comes together quickly, but the words are a struggle. Sometimes uh, everything about the song is pulling teeth. And one of the toughest things to decide is whether or not you should keep going when you're struggling with a song. I mean, if, it, if it's coming together and you like it and it's, it's happening quickly, it's probably gonna, you're probably gonna keep working on it because it's not killing you. But when, when I'm taking something apart, when I've, I like the underlying song, I think, and then, uh, but I, I can't get it to sound right and I redo all the sounds and I reprogram all the parts and I still don't like it and uh, the words still aren't what I want them to be. And I, if I go through that for over and over for a long period of time, sometimes you think, well, this song, you know, it's not meant to be, I should surrender it. Um, and occasionally that happens. Occasionally I surrender the song, but mostly if, I, if I've worked that hard on it, I know there's something to it and I will keep going, which is why it sometimes takes me a couple years to finish a song, even though I might have some, a lot, it's not like I'm working on it actively necessarily for all those years, but I'll work on it, you know, passionately for some weeks. I'll hit a wall, I'll drop it. I'll do other things. I'll work on other things. I'll come back to it. I'll work on it and uh, and just keep pulling at it until I get it right. I have also destroyed songs in that process too. I've also gone way too far and um, pushed and pulled it to the point that uh, I don't think that the finished product is right. Um, I from this from my most recent album, I have a song like that um, that I can talk about at some point. But today we're going to talk about the song "The Anger Remains." The anger remains. Uh, turned out to be one of the more popular songs from Humans May Safely Graze, which came out in 2014. I showed that album cover a little earlier. Um, boy, do I wish I had a vinyl of this one. I like this. Um, but their vinyl is so expensive to press and so few people <laughs> buy it, but I love it. Um, and uh, it was, it. the song came together, the, the first part of the song came together pretty quickly. I had this synth part that I liked and I I had a chorus that I liked. I knew that I knew there was a good hook there, and I liked what I was saying there. But I did not know how to pull the whole thing together. I really didn't know what to do with the words. I I had liked the chorus. I didn't want to change it, but it wasn't fitting what I wanted to sing about on that album in general. And I tried writing lyrics that were, I was doing a Blade Runner thing a little bit when I was working on the songs for that album. I kept trying to throw little references in and do little nods to it. And um, so I tried doing that with the verses on this song um, and it didn't, it didn't stick and I ended up redoing them completely. So I'm trying to decide what order I should play this in. If I should play the demo with different words and a little bit of a different melody and then the, the original song, or the, the song that I released, or vice versa. I think I'm gonna play. I'm gonna play some of the the final version, the version that's on the album. We'll listen to the anger remains for a few minutes, and then I will play you the demo, and you will hear how much it, it did or did not change uh, through a couple of years of poking at it. Um, all right, here's the original. <laughs>
Nothing close as you try to stop The rain slows down You finally hang up but you can't stick around My voice sounds thin I ask you for the truth again But you, you dash away with the same old life About your active day But these are Well, that's um, playing in the background a little bit. Um, so what I'm going to play is the original, not the original demo, because the original demo sounded really raw, but a demo once I was trying to work out how the vocals were going to go. So maybe this was recorded a year before the final was done. Um, and uh, if you listen, you will find that the lyrics are not the same. <laughs> I rewrote them. So let's take a listen to that for a second. Um, as you can hear, completely different verses. And um, I knew I had a chorus that I liked. And it was, you know, I'm, I was trying to, it, that's not usually how it works. I usually write the lyrics all in one go, circling around a, a specific theme. But in this case, I thought of that chorus and I really didn't know what the rest of the story was. I really struggled with it. And then finally, one day uh, it clicked and I knew I knew the story I wanted to tell um, and uh, I didn't need to lean into sort of repurposed Blade Runner imagery um, so uh, and I could and it just it clicked and now I really like that song so as you can see sometimes things um, change quite a bit during the process um, okay next up um, when I start a full-length album in earnest lately in the last decade I've been doing a thing called a 30 beat experiment where I will work up the first 30 to 45 seconds of a beat sometimes with music sometimes with sounds and parts it seems to be easier than sitting down and saying I'm going to write a song today for me I'm just screwing around 
I'm just making a beat. Um, and if an idea comes with it, then great. And if it doesn't, then great. And having to do 30 of them, it's an exercise that um, helps me whittle down quality and find the sound for the record. I can listen to many things and go, oh, you know what I have a lot of that's really good is this sound. I want to focus on that. Um, so that's why I do that. And I will probably one day do a show where I just do a rundown of the 30 beats. But the last beat uh, as a little reward to myself, I guess, has always is always a cover song or a cover beat. And I just do 30, 45 seconds of, a, of, some, of something that I like that's not my own. Um, and um, some of you who were watching my live streams earlier uh, last year um, were, uh, when I was doing cover songs, uh, one of the covers I did was a Nirvana All Apologies. That was the last song in the last 30 beat experiment. Um, I just expanded on it a little before I performed that. So um, the one before that, the one from Humans May Safely Graze, the last song was a song called The Order of Death by um, Public Image LTD or Limited. Um, and uh, I just quickly whip something up and I really, uh, I really like it. Um, so I wanted to play that one for you. Um, just in case, I hope I don't get bounced off of Facebook Live for playing something copyrighted. I'm going to play a little of the original because not everybody knows this song unless you saw the movie Hardware, which I like a lot. You should check it out if you like B-horror movie with a apocalyptic bent that actually seems more relevant now, although we're not in a post- nuclear thing with our um, with our pandemic it does feel a little bit different doesn't it yeah, there are you know, people walking around in hardware with masks on and all that kind of stuff we've got a little bit of that going on don't we um, so I'm gonna play a little bit of that original song hopefully Facebook does not flag me for it I won't play it for too long then I'll play my cover all right If I talk over it, I won't get busted. It'll screw up their algorithm. Maybe. sense of that song now. Here's what I did with it um, very quickly in a 30 beat experiment. So this is by no means a well produced song or anything, but I liked where it was headed. So check it out. This is what you want, want, this is what you get, get, this is what you want, want, this is what you get, get, this is what you want, want, this is what you get, get, this is what you want, want, this is what you get, get, this is what you want, want, this is what you get, get, this is what you want, want, this is what you get, get, this is what you want, want, this is what you get, get, this is what you want, want, this is what you get, get. dug that. Um, maybe I should have done more with it. <laughs> uh, Sarah's saying, best song ever. It is a very cool song. I really do like that um, song. Um, Carlos and Audrey. Uh, oh, um, 
Audrey asking about the Morrissey cover that I did. You have been asking uh, about things that um, are on the docket. It works uh, works out for you because uh, you were asking about the Anger Remains, and there it was. Um, and the cover I did of that Morrissey song is on the docket for today. So stand by. Um, before I do that, I want to play one more um, before and after, uh, where I had completely different lyrics to a song. I think it's so fun to do that. Um, it's another case where I had a piece of music um, that came with, a, this one came with a melody. I knew exactly what I wanted the melody to be. I knew I, I knew the music was, it, it came easily, more easily than most songs because um, I knew I liked it right away. In fact, the challenge was one of the last songs I finished for the record because I didn't want to mess it up. I knew it was already in good shape, and if I worked on it and worked on it and worked on it, I'd only ruin it. Um, so it stayed pretty much the way I started it, um, like from the very first from the very first time I started playing with it. And I'm going to play you the very first time I started playing with it, and then I'll play you um, a little bit of the final version. Um, I'm going to play them in reverse order: uh, demo first, then the finished version. And again, the demo has different lyrics than the than the version that went on the record. This is the demo version of Moderate to Severe, which when I first demoed it was called Overwhelmed. Sometimes Sometimes Everything seems so wrong Sometimes That's what I had. That's all, and I knew. Like that's as usually as much as I do when I make a little beat experiment. That's all I need. I know I've got something I, I can expand on. Um, but I ended up not wanting to do those words. And once I thought of the theme of this record, and I knew it was going to be a play on the pharmaceutical industry, and I was going to be spoofing uh, all of. Um, these drug ads and commercials that we get inundated with and uh, all of the ridiculous disclaimers that are always on the bottom of those ads or really anything. It doesn't even have to be the pharmaceutical industry for the ridiculous disclaimers. Um, my day job is making ads for the auto industry and uh, some of the disclaimers that we put on automotive commercials when especially when there's an offer uh, a lease offer at the end of the commercial there is a lot of legalese and it can be pretty funny um, so I thought that would be so fun to do for lyrics and um, that's how I ended up coming up with the concept for Moderate to Severe, and I was pretty excited when I realized that Cosmicity sounded like a drug um, that you could market. So uh, that just all clicked, and I'm very happy with that song. It's not necessarily everyone's favorite from this album. Um, it's slow. It's a lullaby. Uh, if you're outside of the United States, you don't probably even understand that what I'm spoofing because drug companies don't tend to run uh, advertisements in other countries because the health systems are managed differently uh, in most other countries besides the United States. Um, but uh, for, I think U.S. fans really um, liked it, and I think that especially if you saw, if you're from the U.S. and you saw the video, which if you have not seen, please go on YouTube and check it out. The video spoofs the commercials that we see all the time. I think it, it came out very nicely. Uh, I'm going to play a little bit of that, and then... I will address these comments about my cover songs that everyone is writing and a covers album. We'll talk about that in a minute. Dry mouth, night sweats. Prescription for you. 
city's right for you. Headache, fever, rarely resulting in. Prescription for you. Seek medical attention for increased affection or allergic reaction to feeling so good. Consult your physician or well trained magician to see if cosmicity is right. Swallow it down, digest it good. I was uh, so excited to work Cosmicity into that song, um, not only because I, I think it's fun that it sounds like a drug, but uh, people would finally know how to say it. Um, anybody who heard the song anyway, that, that made me happy. I've been trying to do that for years and a not, uh, not blatant and, let's say, hip-hop way where I just reference myself Cosmicity in the house, warming up, uh. I mean, I could do that. That'd probably be kind of funny. Um, but I didn't. I did it like this. So, um, And uh, what else about that song? Oh, um, uh, May is on right now. She is in that video. One more reason to go watch the music video for that. She's fantastic. She's in there with her daughter. Uh, they're feeding the ducks in the duck pond, which is a classic nothing scene from a from a drug commercial there are always just people doing nothing it's fantastic uh it was a lot of fun to spoof um i i just really enjoy that song i know it's not for everybody but it's one of my favorites um all right now's the time um everybody's uh been asking about a covers record because people have been liking my covers and i obviously did um you know the first minute minute and a half of a bunch of songs uh, a little while back. I did five songs from the 80s and five songs from the 90s. It was a lot of fun. Um, and uh, I have been thinking about whether or not I want to release those. Here's the reason I always hesitate to release cover songs or to put too much work into them. When I do them, it's usually I do it quick and I move on. It's just a little exercise to record and fill out a whole song and program it in, uh, engineer it and master it and release it. It's a lot of time and effort. It's a lot of money to do that stuff. And um, so there's only, there's only a, you know, a little bit that I put out over time. If I take the time to do a covers record, which I'm not saying I won't, I might. Um, it just means that there, I won't be taking that same time to do an originals record, right? If uh, it'll take me a year to put together even an EP probably uh, of four or five of those songs that I started uh, if we pick the best ones and put them on an EP and that does sound like fun and I think it'd be really cool to make that I'm not saying I won't but I hesitate because uh, it means time not spent making original music which is what I love the most so I'm torn about it but I am considering it um, I like those cover songs too and on that note um, I thought I would sing one to you despite the fact that I'm going to be over here singing it a little bit so that I can reach the microphone. Um, my setup, if you could see it uh, in my living room, is ridiculous. Uh, two computers on chairs is what we're, t what we're talking about because um, I needed to be close to... I figured out all these things to get the audio to sound better and I needed to have a direct uh, connection to my uh, internet. I couldn't use Wi-Fi. I needed that for faster streaming and uh, a couple of other reasons why I had to cram everything right in this spot in this room. Um, so anyway, uh, long story short, the setup I'm using does not allow me to have a microphone besides the one that's built into the laptop right now. I will invest in better gear if we're going to keep doing live streams and being in lockdown for months longer, which we may be. Um, but for now, I'm going to try to sing 
this cover that you guys have heard before, but I just thought it'd be fun to do something live um, using the crappy microphone that's built into this laptop. So bear with me. We're going to give it a shot and we'll see how it goes. I am going to turn a little bit of reverb on and hopefully that helps soften things a little bit. Ooh, there's a the reverb. Okay, here we go. Sorry, I do not have more of that. It is fun. It is very tempting to record those, I have to admit. I think an EP is probably in order. Um, I'll probably do it. I'll probably do it. Um, but <laughs> uh, David says, it finally, it took a global pandemic for you to finally sing Morrissey. David remembers that I did not like the Smiths app. All when I was in high school. He was a huge fan. I wasn't into it. I liked things that were less depressing, uh, at least for the early part of high school. Um, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't even a big Depeche Mode fan, if I'm being honest, when I first heard it. Um, they grew on me over time, and I went nuts for them once Violator came out. I was already starting to get into them a little bit. I liked I like Speak and Spell, of course, because it was Vince Clark and it was more optimistic. i got to take this reverb off. I'm sorry. Um, and um, all of that. But I just, I wasn't a big fan of, of sad music, you know. But then my angst finally kicked in and uh, I started to really like it. But The Smiths was one of the last things to, to come in for me. And even to this day, I like some Smiths, uh, but I'm not a massive Smiths fan. Um, but I, I actually like... A handful of Morrissey's solo songs better than some of the Smith stuff. Hopefully nobody wants to murder me for that. And that song is one of the Morrissey songs that I really like. He himself, I don't know how much I'm a big fan of his personality. That comes with a lot of artists, though, right? I've, you know, there are people who don't like my politics. Uh, I've, I believe it or not, there's some Cosmicity fans that are very pro-Trump. I find that hard to fathom, but it's true. I've, I've come across them, and I am not a fan. Uh, but hopefully, uh, uh, kindly, they still listen, I guess. Uh, set those politics aside, which can be harder and harder to do when, when you get into things like global pandemics and life and death and a government that's not taking care of its citizens. But I won't get into it too much. I don't want to scare everybody away. Um, but um, all right. Uh, I have something else queued up here that I wanted to play for you guys. Shift gears back. 
Um, and that is a B-side that I did. It's just an instrumental. Um, I'm just going to let it play. Um, I just whipped it together when I was working on Humans May Safely Graze uh, some years back. I was just trying out keyboards that I purchased. So it's got a handful of presets from different keyboards that I didn't alter, but I just liked the sound of it. I didn't feel good about releasing it. A, I didn't need another instrumental, and, and B, presets. I wanted. I like to make my own sounds, um, but it was it was fun to play with. So, uh, and how often do you get to hear unreleased B sides? I thought it'd be cool to play more. So here we go. The song I had called it "Soul for Sale." That was Soul for Sale, unreleased from the uh, Humans May Safely Graze era. Um, you guys are so nice. So many great, nice comments on that song. Um, it is not, uh, Diana, it was not entirely presets, um, but you're right. Uh, the presets that I chose obviously were 
things that I thought sounded like me. Um, I will occasionally let a preset or two slip through into a song if I really like it. I'm not opposed to using them, but I like to craft a lot of my own sounds. But it, yeah, so the uh, some of the repetitive synths in there that are like pulsing, those are definitely presets. Um, but my own melodies, uh, a couple of my, certainly my own drums, I'd stolen those drums from Violet, I think they're the same exact drums from that song. Um, and, you know, so some of the song sounds were my own, but yeah, a lot of presets. Um, and um, people are saying maybe I should release some of these B-sides. Um, again, it's, I could, that one's in pretty good shape. I could probably finish it up fairly quickly. A lot of the B-sides though, are short. I only do the first verse and chorus, so to to do them would be to put a lot of work into them and release them. And um, if they were good enough, okay, that's cool because then it's still original music that I'm I'm putting out there. But a lot of times the B sides are shelved because they weren't quite good enough. But uh, maybe uh, there, a case could be made for um, putting them out. Maybe as maybe it would maybe fifty fifty. Maybe it's half covers, half B sides on a record. Maybe that's confusing, though. I don't know. Something to think about. Um, but I'm so, I'm so glad you guys liked it. Um, all right. It's been an hour. I've only got a couple more things planned for today. Um, so I will um, I will get to those, and I will not keep you guys here all day. Um, I'm going to answer Carlos's question before I move on to the next thing, though. It's a, it's a cool... He says, an ambiguous question. What do you want to do? Do you prefer to sing, to play synths? I think he's saying, what's what's the what's my favorite part? Uh, or if I, you know, if I could just be a singer, would I just be a singer? Um, and the answer to that is first and foremost, the part, the thing that I actually really love is songwriting. That and that's again why covers st strain me a little bit because, you know, I like putting songs into the world. I like putting. Um, new ideas and uh, new melodies and that kind of thing. That That's the part I care about the most. I love synth pop music and that's why that's uh, the genre I work in. But if I had found the acoustic guitar more appealing, I think I'd still be a songwriter and I'd be, you know, I'd do singer-songwriter. Because um, I, I just, I like putting words to music. I love thinking of, of new songs. Um, vocals, I've gotten better over the years. I was atrocious when I started uh, as a vocalist. Now I'm I'm okay. Um, I'm never going to be, you know, you couldn't put me on the voice up against any of those folks. I'm not that type of singer, um, but I'm getting by. So no, I don't think I would ever uh, try to be a vocalist necessarily. Um, but I, but I, I think, like I said, I think I get away with it for my music. I have questioned over the years whether I've hurt myself, whether if I you know, right now kind of the flavor on synth pop is a soft female voice. I like that flavor on synth pop. If I had, if I asked someone like that to sing my songs and release them that way, would they do better? Would they be more successful? Um, because that's more the sound of the day. I've, I've questioned it over the years, especially because I don't have, uh, you know, I don't necessarily have the kind of voice that is trendy right now. Um, but the end of the day the songs are so personal I always end up singing them because I feel like it's written in my voice so it needs to be sung in my voice that said I'm getting older I was listening to I want a dog when we played it earlier and that song vocally I look back on it and I go I'm pretty proud of myself because I'm singing in this upper range and this deep lower range and I'm singing in octaves together on that song and I don't have that kind of range anymore. I don't think I could do the same performance today. I My range has become more limited. So uh, we'll see. I suppose if my voice kept getting worse, maybe I'd look into a vocalist, but um, all right. Let's see. Uh, okay, I have two more things queued up. Am I ignoring anybody else's questions? I don't think so. Um, all right, the next thing I have queued up is not, interesting, not my vocals. It's a remix I did for another band. Uh, again, I hope I don't get in Facebook trouble for playing this because it's not my song, um, but it is my remix. So all of the music you hear uh, was programmed by me. The only thing from the original band are, is the vocals, 
and uh, I stole one little sound in the breakdown, I think, of theirs from the original parts that they gave me. Um, this was submitted for a remix contest for a band that I love called The Bird and the Bee. They are one of my favorite bands just ever. I love them so much. Um, and uh, when they, when I heard they were doing a remix contest, I, I was like, I, what? Are you kidding me? Just the chance to play with their, with their stuff. Um, if you don't know who they are, it's a duo. The, the synth programmer uh, and, and, and uh, co-songwriter is Greg Kirsten. Greg Kirsten is a Grammy award-winning producer, um, but you wouldn't know it from The Bird and the Bee because they are an indie underground band, even though he is a multimillionaire platinum selling crazy because he's a songwriter for people like Kelly Clarkson and all these other artists that you listen to. But when he works as the bird and the bee, it's, uh, it's synth pop with a, with a jazz wink, uh, but mostly synth pop and, uh, with a, with a soft female vocalist. And, um, uh, I, I had to submit a remix for them and somehow, some way I was the winning remix for their contest. Um, uh, unfortunately, at the time, they had a deal with um, SoundCloud. Nothing against SoundCloud. SoundCloud's great, but they were they had the only place they were allowed to release my remix was on SoundCloud. It's on there to this day, so it's not on an official release of theirs. But um, it was a great connection to that band who I love, and to get to to get kudos from them and to get singled out as someone who did a great job by one of the you know maybe the most popular songwriter today out there uh, was such a great boost and um, was very exciting for me. So I'm going to play that remix that I did for them of Heard It on the Radio. And, uh, and then I have one more really rare way back gem to close it out for today, and that'll be it. Um, okay, this is Heard It on the Radio, the Bird and the Bee Cosmicity Remix. We first met, it wasn't what you said Still I loved you like mad, I loved you like mad When we first met, they were playing that song And then it stuck into my head, it stuck into my head When we first kissed, you made it to my list And I couldn't stop myself, think of nothing else 
All right. That was the Cosmicity version of Heard It on the Radio. Um, the Bird and the Bee uh, did the original. And um, you guys are so nice saying that that, song, that remix is better than the original. They, it is different than the original. The original um, you know, is on an album of theirs that is all covers, except for that one, of Hall & Oates songs. If, you're a, if you would like to hear synth-pop versions of Hall & Oates, do not um, hesitate grab their uh it's it's i think they call it a, a tribute to the masters i can't remember the name of the, of the album but they just go look at the bird and the bee check out their hollow notes um tribute album and uh this song is on there written in the style of hollow notes and performed in that style and i really like the original it fits right in with that very well um but it was fun to put a different spin on it for this remix so you guys are too kind um so um what else do i want to oh i have one more thing to play i want to address everybody's comments before i play this because this song is going to be on the way out um people are suggesting other songs for me to cover that is very nice of you guys i uh i have a million ideas for additional cover songs occasionally i bite off more than i can chew um I got stalled when I was doing all those cover songs um, back like six, eight, nine, however many months ago it was now. Um, and I wanted to move out of the 90s into um, the, you know, everything 2000 and after. I was going to do some songs from that era, some popular pop songs that I have no business covering. And the first one that I started to do was a Justin Bieber song. Um, and believe it or not, I got stuck on it. Um, and that's what stopped me from making more because I was like, I, this, I know this would be a great synth pop cover and it would be funny and I could never get it right. And then a, a lot of distractions came up in my life, but, um, there is a half finished Justin Bieber cover out there. <laughs> I, I, maybe I'll play that one of these, one of these days. Um, um, okay. Um, before I go, the pandemic uh, I hope everyone is staying safe. I hope everyone is doing okay financially. I know so many people in my life are struggling, um, whether it be uh, with illness or someone lost. Uh, not, I don't want to. I'm not trying to bring everybody down. Live streams are fun, um, but uh, I, it's hard not to address it right now. Um, Let's talk to each other. Let's reach out to each other if we are struggling. Let's help each other. Um, that's not a bunch of empty BS. Actually send me a message. Send uh, this, this community a message. Um, we're not that big, um, so we can take care of each other and, and not get lost in the crowd. You know, um, there's only, uh, you know, I can't actually see how many people are live streaming this, but, uh, you know, I'm going to guess there's 15, 20 of us, you know, doing this right now. And, uh, and those are the people who didn't live stream OMD today, which I did not know was at the same time as this. Uh, you guys chose me or you didn't know. And I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> it means a lot. Uh, but, um, I just, let's, let's take care of each other. I'm thinking, uh, I'm thinking of a lot of friends who've, uh, who've lost, people uh, whose family members are sick. I'm thinking specifically of May right now who lost her brother and God, I can't even imagine. Um, and she's listening right now and thank you so much. Um, my heart breaks for you. I don't, I, there's no words for something like that. Um, it's, un, it's, it's unreal. And um, I don't want anyone else to get sick. I want everybody to please stay so safe. Take this seriously. It's real. It's so real. Um, take care of yourselves. Protection when you're out. Mask, gloves. Don't go out when you don't have to. Um, I know it's dying down. Soon things will be safer. Even when it is, be extra safe. Be safer than the other people. Don't get sick. Thank you um, for taking care of yourselves because I love you all. Um, all right, my serious moment. Um, let's end on something to bring us up a little bit, I hope. Uh, this song sucks. I'm gonna end on a song that sucks and because, uh, because it's relevant. It's called Saturday Night. I wrote this song 
um, way, way, way back. I think uh, I maybe was releasing The Vision in 1994 when I first started, um, and uh, I didn't record it. It was going to be... It was going to be on the moment, right? So it was after I released, yeah, that's right. It was going to be on the moment. And um, we cut it, and you guys are going to be so glad when you hear what I cut it for, because it's nowhere near as good as the song that I cut it for. We cut it for Awake, um, and it was a very, very good decision. I hadn't written Awake yet when this song was slated to be on the album, to be fair. If Awake had existed, I'm sure I would have already cut it. But as soon as I wrote Awake, it came at the last second. I was like, this has got to be on the moment. What do we cut? we cut this song Saturday night because Saturday night was, it was pandering to a sound that was happening at that time. I was trying to be a little bit like the club music that was being played during that time, you know, to help myself be a little more marketable. And, uh, it's, it does, it, it wouldn't have stood the test of time. It doesn't stand the test of time. I did not record it well. In fact, the only reason I have a recording of it is because Years, I didn't have any way of recording it. I didn't record in the studio. I didn't have anything at home at the time to record with besides cassette tapes. And I never even put this on a cassette. But years and years later, when I got a digital audio tape recorder, I played this out of this directly to the tape recorder from the synths that I had. And that's what this is. So it's not a great recording. It's not going to sound as cool as it would have had I done a studio recording. I could have made it sound clubby and big in the bottom. And... Uh, and done some cool effects to it and all that. I didn't have any of that gear back then, so it's it's this is this is some dry garbage from the mid '90s. But it's Saturday night, and there's nothing to do, and it's so relevant. And I do kind of wish I had a good recording of this because it it's the perfect song to end on. So I'm playing it anyway. David is on here going, I love this song. David was there, of course, when these songs were being written, so he's got a fond memory of it. I think I even tried to do this song live in an Ann Arbor club once, even though there's hardly any vocals. I think I just said the vocal parts and stood around. I always wanted to do that Vince Clark thing. Oh, I wish I had a glass. Um, from Yaz. When uh, I, he did the first handful of Yaz shows, there's I've seen video. Alison Moyer is up there doing her thing, um, being awesome. And Vince, of course, pre-programs all the music. It's synth pop. And... He was never. Uh, he was never. He never really wanted to pretend like a lot of bands, including Depeche Mode, did. Right? Like, even though it was on tape, they, you know, when they were doing TV performances, they'd all stand at the keyboards and pretend to play. So it looked like a band. People needed that. Believe me, I used to get booed all the time when I would go up on my, by stage by myself because they didn't understand where the music was coming from if there wasn't a band. That was a thing in the 90s. People didn't get it. Now, of course, everybody understands how electronic music works and that one person can program a lot of parts, but they didn't back then. But Vince embraced it, and he would just kick back with a cigarette and a martini and do nothing while Allison played. He'd push play, he'd kick it, he'd wait, song would end, he'd push stop, and that's all he did on stage, and I freaking loved it. I loved that he embraced it, and he was like, yeah, I already did all the hard work. I programmed this already. Enjoy. We're playing it loud for you. Allison's singing it live for you. That's what. That's how this is going to go. And setting a new uh, tone for it. Um, so I think I thought that that's why it was okay to play Saturday Night Live. Saturday Night Live. Saturday Night in a live venue, uh, even though there's no vocals. So there's a... Um, completely unnecessary aside. Thank you everybody for tuning in. I am going to do this again. I have lots more that I could do. Um, it might be two weeks before I do it uh, again because uh, I have a lot going on in the next week or two. Maybe next weekend but probably two weeks. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, I hope you enjoy this terrible song from the 90s called Saturday Night. Bye everybody. <laughs>